Uh, next up, we have one of our prominent community members, a Zabbix partner, Nathan Liefting, um, Zabbix consultant and trainer. And Nathan will be talking about Zabbix proxy high availability and load balancing introduced in Zabbix 7.0. Nathan, welcome. You got the stage. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me? We can hear you. Yes, we can see you. Perfect. Very good. Then I'll start sharing my screen and I'll tell you a little bit about proxy high availability. There we go. All right. So proxy high availability and load balancing was introduced in Sabix 7. So let's have a look at what was added, how it was added, and how we can utilize it in our new environments. But before, before we get into that, a little short something about myself. My name is Nathan. I am a Zabbix consultant and Zabbix trainer for about four years now. And uh, I do that at a company called Open Source ICT Solutions, where we provide Zabbix training, consultancy, support, and anything that you might need uh, in the Netherlands and in the United States and United Kingdom specifically. And you might also know me from the Zabbix book, Zabbix 7 IT Infrastructure Monitoring, which we wrote and were able to get it out right after the Zabbix 7 release. So that's a little bit about me. Then the high availability and uh, proxy load balancing. So it's been a long time coming. Uh, I think it's one of the most requested features and it's finally here. Uh, we can now do it. We can now natively in our Zabbix environment, make sure that we set up proxy high availability and load balancing at the same time. But why would you even need proxy high availability and load balancing? Well, if you've been building Zabbix environments for a while, you might have noticed that at several parts of the Zabbix environment, we now have all of these high availability options. So we can do it on the server, we can do it on the front end, on the database, um, using all kinds of built-in tools uh, into MariaDB, Postgres for the database, on Nginx, uh, Apache on the front end, but also natively in Zabbix server since Zabbix 6.0. So the most important part of Zabbix that still wasn't high available was only the proxy. And now we have that too. Because that proxy, it sits in between your Zabbix server and everything that you're trying to monitor. So it is a vital part of your Zabbix environment. It's very important to make sure that you actually make sure that that's high available. So important part of your infrastructure there. If your proxy goes down, then a part of your monitoring will also go down. If you have several proxies, of course, the impact is now limited to everything that's behind that proxy but you are driving blind, as we can say, for everything behind that proxy. So it is important that the proxy will also be high available. And of course, the load balancing added onto that will also make sure that we can make sure to spread the load even better than we could before. So let's dive a little bit into the history here. First things first, like I said, Zabbix server high availability is already built in and available. It was introduced in Zabbix 6.0 and it works straight out of the box. And honestly, it is quite an amazing implementation. It's very simple, very resilient. We've been trying to break it for a while now. And honestly, it just functions as you might expect. And the beauty of it is that Zabbix has decided to implement it by making sure that there's a new table in the Zabbix database. So it's quite simple. The Zabbix server sends uh, basically a heartbeat to the database. If the heartbeat is no longer received, another Zabbix server can now check that same table in the database and do a failover, take over the task of being the main server. So it is very, as you can say, it is very um, active passive, but we do have a very resilient high availability in that case. For the proxy, however, we didn't have anything, but now we do. So what we do now, or what we did before with the proxy before Zabbix 7.0 is we could use some third-party tools to do proxy high availability. It wasn't really load balancing usually. Uh, you had kind of like an active standby setup, 
with third-party tools to make your whole Linux environment, for example, uh, into kind of like a cluster. Or we could use some scripting, uh, for example, Python scripts to make sure that if there's a problem, one of the proxies is no longer up, uh, we can use Zabbix Actions, for example, to then do a failover of those proxies, do a call to the API, reload the caches, and then make sure that the next proxy takes over. So it was already possible, but honestly, it was quite the hassle to implement, maintain, and just making sure that it kept running over the years. So not the best solution, but it works. But now with Cybex 7.0, we don't really have to think about those historical solutions anymore. If you're still running a version before 7.0, there is the option, but probably upgrading would be the better option because it's there, it's available, we can start using it. And the way Zabbix has implemented this is honestly, once again, quite uh, simple and straightforward, at least from a front-end configuration perspective. Basically, what was added by Zabbix is Zabbix proxy groups. Whenever you have a proxy, you can now organize that proxy that you created into a proxy group with several other proxies. Once it's in that proxy group, that group will make sure to provide both high availability and proxy load balancing. We can see a little example here with group A with three proxies or group B with four proxies. We can have many proxies to a group to provide that high availability and load balancing, making the whole proxy setup very resilient. And like I said, it's, it, it is a very easy implementation because basically all you have to do is go to administration proxy groups, which is a new menu. You can see it right there under administration. So that does mean that you need super admin access to get to that uh, configuration. But once you do, you can set up the proxy groups and all you really have to do is give that proxy group a name, define your fill over period, the minimum number of proxies that should be in the group. You can provide a description as well. And then afterwards you can start adding your proxies. So there's not a whole lot of configuration on these apps front end side of things. Uh, and of course you can also delete the group afterwards, but do keep in mind that you should remove all of your proxies from, from that group first. And then once you've created the proxy group, it will show up. It will show you the state, some of the configuration settings and how many proxies are in the group uh, and what proxies are in that group as well. All right, but we have a few configuration things to tweak in the front end. So we have that failover period and we have the minimum number of proxies. Now for the minimum number of proxies, this is quite an important setting. Because let's say we provide a proxy group here with eight proxies in it. So with eight proxies, uh, we have quite a large group to low balance and make sure that we have the high availability. That's fine, that's good. But what happens if you have only one proxy left in that group of eight different proxies? Well, I'm going to assume that you didn't configure all of your eight proxies to handle the load of eight proxies altogether. Probably there's kind of like a balance in between that. So what might happen is that if you lose too much proxies, the load might become too heavy for the number of proxies that you have left in your proxy group. And this, this is exactly where your minimum number of proxies comes in. So let's say we have eight proxies in this group. We now lose a few members in this case, we can lose up to three, because if we lose more than three, we drop below the minimum threshold, the minimum number of proxies of five, and the group will go offline. And when your group goes offline, you will of course still lose all that monitoring for all of those hosts that are being monitored by those groups. So you need to make sure that you balance this out, that you have enough proxies to take over the entire load of everything that was uh, now lost, and then you won't have any issues. Otherwise, it will go offline to make sure that you do not overload your proxies. So in this case, we lose one, there's no problem yet. We lose another, there's no problem yet. 
But if we lose that third one, there's no problem yet. But afterwards, we can lose. Uh, we can't lose another one because then we lost more than three. We'll only have four left. Four is less than a minimum number of proxies. So the group goes offline and the monitoring is also not working anymore. Now, once we've created that proxy group, we can also start configuring the proxies. Uh, you might already have some proxies in Zabbix. That's no problem at all. You can actually use your existing proxies. There's no limitation on that. So if you upgrade from six to seven, you can just start assigning your proxies to groups and it will start working because whenever you assign this, it is once again quite easy. You just set up your proxy as you usually do, but then uh, you can assign a proxy group to this proxy as well. So there's a new field called proxy group. And all you have to do is select one of your groups and the proxy will be added to that group. Uh, you can only add a proxy to a single group though. So there's no multiple groups for a single proxy to kind of make it more like dynamic. Uh, it is one group, one proxy, uh, which will probably keep your setup a lot easier anyway. So it is probably a good practice anyway. And then on the host side of things, of course, we'll also need to do some configuration so we can actually make sure that when we set up a host, we can assign it to the Zabbix server or a specific proxy as we already could. Nothing changed on that side, except we can now also select the proxy group. So you have this new selector monitored by server proxy or proxy group. And for example, if we select proxy group, you will now have a field where you can select a specific proxy group by name and then add that host to that proxy group. That means that that host can be monitored by any proxy in the proxy group, depending on the load balancing that that proxy group will do for you. And you can also see that there's no proxy assigned yet. The load balancing had, uh, has yet to do its task. So there is no proxy assigned yet. The load balancing will do that later. And then you as a Zabbix admin can also see that that proxy was assigned from the proxy group. So you're not blind to what your host is currently being monitored by. You can still find issues with a specific proxy in a group. Uh, that will all be clear uh, because it will still be available in the front end. But the assignment is done on the proxy group in this case. And as you can see, after a while, the Zabbix server automatically assigns the proxy from the proxy group. In this case, the proxy called Maaskantje. Uh, from that proxy group, the Netherlands, to make sure that the proxy group, uh, that the host will actually be monitored by a proxy. All right, so let's dive a little bit more into detail about the load balancing, because now we have this nice proxy group, uh, but the proxy group will actually do something in the background. It's not just a little piece of front-end functionality, of course. So the developers at Zabbix has, have taken uh, the liberty to develop this whole system to make sure that the load balancing is balancing as supposed to. What will happen is whenever you add a proxy to the proxy group, it will become available for the proxy group manager to automatically start assigning hosts. So that's what that proxy group manager does. It manages the proxies assigned to hosts within a specific proxy group. It manages all of the proxy groups that you have. It will know the status of all the proxies, if the proxy is still reachable, how many hosts are assigned to a specific proxy at a time, and it will then start to distribute the hosts to the online proxies in the proxy group. So we have five proxies in this case. The proxy manager decides to start doing some load balancing. One of the proxies gets 20, some other proxies get 35 hosts, and another proxy 25. So the numbers might not be exactly equal all the time because there will be some load balancing done to make sure that uh, the load is balanced over all of the available resources. We can now see a host come in, that host is assigned to a proxy. The proxy group manager will simply tell the host, hey, you will now be monitored by proxy number four, for example, and another host might be assigned to a different proxy and as such be added to the count. 
Now the Cybex server will track the status of all those proxies in the proxy group all the time, just like it did before. It will make sure that the proxies are online and it can also inform other proxies if a proxy goes offline. So if a proxy goes offline altogether, let's say it crashes or simply because you stopped it, the proxy will be in an offline mode and the other proxies will have to take over the task. So without delay, the other proxies will take over the task and start monitoring that host instead, making sure that there's a quick failover. So the proxy goes offline, the Zabbix server will immediately detect that, it will start doing a calculation and it will start to redistribute all of the hosts towards the different proxies. All right, now specifically with the Zabbix agents, you might think that this introduces some issues because the Zabbix agents, well, it was always configured to accept incoming connections or to connect to a specific proxy. So whether or not the Zabbix agent is in passive or in active mode, this will simply just function if we set it up correctly. For the Zabbix agents, there's a specific requirement. We will have to make sure that on the server equals to parameter, in the Zabbix server configuration file, all of the proxies that want to connect to this agent are added to the allow list there. Because if one of the proxies isn't able to connect to the host, then it also won't be able to load balance that to that specific proxy because it simply won't work and the connection cannot be set up. So you might be losing data there. So make sure that you add all of the proxies that you want to be able to monitor this passive agent, or you can also add an, an entire subnet, of course, to that allow list to make sure that all of your proxies can reach it. Whatever way you do it, DNS, specific IPs, IP ranges, that's up to you, but you need to make sure that your network allows for the connection to happen and that your Zabbix agent allows for the connection to be accepted on the agent side as well. So check your firewalls and check your agent configuration. And the story is basically the same on the active agent, yet also a little bit different because as usual, on the server active parameter in the active agent setup, you can specify all of the proxies that you want this agent to be able to connect to. And we can add multiple proxies now. Usually in the old case, in the, old, in the older versions of Zabbix, you would set up a single proxy or a single Zabbix server IP that you would want to connect to in server active equals to. But you can now add multiple proxies from the same Zabbix environments by simply specifying a semicolon. By specifying the semicolon, it will know that they are part of a proxy group and you won't have issues of, of duplicate data or anything like that, like the errors in the log file that you might see. And there can be a redirect as well. So whenever this agent connects to any of the proxies that are in this proxy group and it tries to connect to it, well, it will be redirected because the proxy knows I am not currently monitoring this specific host. Another proxy in this group is. All of the proxies know about the state of that and it can redirect it to another, uh, to another proxy instead. And the cool thing about this is you can see that we have a proxy group of five hosts or, or five proxies in this case. And the single Sabix agent is configured to only connect to two of them, proxy two and three. So it knows about proxy two and three here, but you can see it's redirected to proxy four. We do not actually need to add every single proxy of the proxy group to the server active two because the other proxies can just redirect the traffic. Now, of course, adding all of the proxies to server active equals two might be the best course of action to keep everything clear, to make sure that you can utilize all of the proxies in that environment correctly, even in case one of them goes down, but it isn't necessarily required to make it function. So in case you make a mistake, it might still function as you want it to. And it's even possible to do that with the Zabbix server. Let's say uh, you configure your active agents and you configure every single one of them to connect to your Zabbix server address. 
The SABIC server knows about the proxy groups and it knows about all of the proxies. That means that your SABIC server can actually redirect that traffic from the server to the proxies instead, because it knows it isn't currently the monitoring host for this host that we're trying to reach. So the proxy group manager will know and it will reassign that traffic to the correct proxy. So technically you can could configure all of your agents to connect to that server. It will still be redirected correctly. Is it the most efficient route? Probably not because you probably want to connect to the proxy directly, but it is a possibility and it makes things like migrating a little bit easier or making mistakes a little bit less of an impact. It can also happen that your proxy loses the network connection towards the static server, uh, but it's still running. What about that? So your agent is connecting to the proxy. Uh, the proxy is like, hey, I'm still running, processes are up, what will happen? Well, it's the proxy manager on the SABIC server that is going to automatically reassign hosts, if you remember correctly. So the proxy will be marked as offline. The proxy will know because it no longer has the connection that it needs to, to send data to the SABIC server. And as such, it will automatically start reassigning the hosts. So no problem there as well. The communication error will happen between the server and the proxy and the uh, this proxy will simply redirect the traffic to the next proxy. Now, then there's also the balancing rules that we might have, because at one point uh, it might happen, of course, that more hosts are on a single proxy than that there should be, because we're also doing load balancing. It's not just a high availability implementation. So let's say we have those five proxies again. All of them are part of that same proxy group. But that middle proxy there, well, it has 60 hosts on it. Well, the proxy all the way on the right, the fifth proxy, only has 15. That might seem a little bit unbalanced. At least the proxy manager will think so, because if the number of hosts assigned to a proxy is different from the average by twice or more than the number of hosts on another proxy, it will start to rebalance it. So it will grab the average. It will calculate if the average is more than twice as high, 60 compared to the average is twice as high. So it will now start to do a rebalance. It will rebalance all of the hosts available. And you can see that there's 30 hosts on each of the proxies. That does mean, however, that the load balancing is done on the host level. So do keep in mind that uh, one host might have more new values per second than another host. So some proxies might still have a higher load in the end, but the hosts are load balanced quite nicely. Something to keep in mind. It's also possible to add a new proxy, of course. Uh, it will recalculate the average. You can see we have a new proxy here. It's added zero hosts on it because it is brand new, no hosts assigned to it yet, but there's a new average of 25. So we'll start to rebalance the hosts over all of those proxies. So the unassigned hosts are then reassigned and the low balancing has done its job again. So no problem taking proxies out or putting new proxies into the proxy group, it will simply find the next balance. Now we also have a bunch of new visualization in the Zabbix administration tabs for this. For example, we can see the proxy list here under administration proxies, and you can see all of those proxies that are being added for. And you can now see what proxy group they are part of. You can see their modes, their encryption, uh, as usual, you can also see if they're in an online or offline state. It's possible to get the version these days as well. And we still have that last scene age. And you can see the item counts, VPS, and the number of hosts as usual. So a few additions to the visualization aspect, which will be nice for you administrators. If a host goes offline, like the Amsterdam proxy right there, you can also see that the hosts will be reassigned, in this case, to the Zanstad proxy. So we went from nine on each to apparently 10 on each in the cluster. 
So we redistribute them quite nicely. You can see that happen here as well. We have Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands proxies. Uh, we can see all of the hosts on them quite nicely uh, in that proxy group. So you can see the number of online proxies, the minimum proxies required. So we're getting that just fine. But if one of them goes offline because there's no longer enough proxies in that group, you can see that it goes into the offline mode. So it's quite easy to track this in the front end as well. Some notes uh, before we call it a day on this subject. Uh, hosts that are created by an LLD rule are pinned to the master host, which will then of course also be uh, redistributed among your proxy group. So make sure that if you are using LLD created hosts, that you do keep in mind that you might have all of those hosts on a single proxy as well. Proxies are equal. Uh, there's no priorities or weights yet. This might prove problematic for you if you have two data centers or more data centers uh, and you want to make sure that uh, one side is always used. Uh, one of the use cases that uh, I would really like to see in the proxy groups, for example, is the fact that if I have all of my hosts uh, on one side and I want them to be monitored as closely as possible to the source by putting proxies locally, but in case those proxies go down, then go to the data center that's further away. Well, that's not possible yet, but it might be an addition that could be made in the future. So no priority, no wait yet, but something to consider maybe. Uh, SMP traps aren't officially supported. Of course, you can just send your traps to all the proxies in the group, or you can try to do something with uh, virtual IPs or something like that, uh, but you might run into to some issues uh, with that and getting that set up, uh, or maybe just adding more traffic. So keep in mind with SNP traps, you might still want to consider a different solution. Uh, hosts that are auto registered to a proxy group is also possible. Um, and keep in mind that some of your item types depend on your configuration on the other side of things. So the database checks, your external checks, et cetera. Uh, you might also need to add your scripts and such on all of the proxies in your proxy group. So make sure to make all of those checks. All right, so very nice addition by Zebix here. Uh, we can really start to utilize this in Zebix 7.0 and throughout uh, the next few months, we can really start to discover what we can all do with these proxy groups, but it's looking to be an amazing new feature that I'm sure I'll utilize a lot. Any questions? Thank you, Nathan. Quite a few questions. So um, first question isn't necessarily about proxy groups. But I can cover it. In case of Zabbix server HA, can we stop one of the Zabbix core servers and upgrade it and then restart it and then upgrade the second one? Um, yes, you can do that. Um, since the database will be upgraded when you upgrade the, the first uh, server and restart it and essentially switch to it, then while the first one is working, you'll upgrade the second one. That should work just fine. Um, then from Zabbix agent side, I'm not really sure, Nathan, uh, about the particular use case. Maybe you can cover it from your side. From Zabbix agent side, does Zabbix proxy group use a common orchestration of metrics scripts or will result in executing, will, I guess, it result in executing script multiple times as it now happens if you have two Zabbix servers? So as far as I can understand, no, there will be no multiple execution of scripts. It will be monitored by a single proxy, like the agent will be monitored, for example, by a single proxy from a proxy group, and no multiple executions will happen. Um, anything to add from your side, Nathan? This, the question is quite written in a tricky way. No, no, I tend to agree. Like uh, your proxy, for example, if we have like an external check that's being executed by the proxy, the proxy will execute it. If it's the agent that's executing like a script, it will just send it to the one proxy that it's communicating at at that time. So that shouldn't be an issue at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can uh, the active agent redirect still work if these Zabbix proxies are natted? I mean, as long as you have uh, network connectivity, I don't see uh, why it is an issue. Um, let me... Think about that real quick. 
because the Zabbix server. Well, actually, no. You might you might run into an issue there because uh, I think the Zabbix server will know about the IP of the proxy uh, that it knows and not the netted IP. So that could be something to consider uh, there that you might run into a little bit of an issue there. But I'm not quite sure on that. I would have to do some tests. Yeah, I also would have to test it. Don't have a direct answer right off the bat. Do a test environment and, and try it out, essentially, and then you'll see if, if you run into any hurdles. Yeah, um, something to consider, at least. Yeah. Uh, once again, I don't remember by heart, but is it possible to see in the Zabbix uh, graphical user interface which proxy out of group currently handles the host? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, it we does show that, right? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Can a proxy belong to multiple proxy groups? That's a common one. Nope. Uh, only one. Only one. Yeah. In the agents, and we have, I think, multiple questions about this, can server and server active be set to a DNS SRV record instead of having to deploy agent configuration updates when adding a new proxy or removing a proxy to from group? This way, only a DNS record change is needed when the proxies in a proxy group change. Oh yeah, for sure. Not nothing really changed there. Uh, you can still add DNS records as your server active uh, equals two. So uh, yes, that's possible. It's always been possible, and it's also possible with the proxy groups now. Uh, let me see. Uh, in Zabbix version six. Uh... Zabbix support team recommended to monitor proxy by itself. In version 7, can we monitor Zabbix proxy from Zabbix proxy it belongs to? So I guess we're talking about best practices for proxy self-monitoring. Okay, yeah. I, I don't think anything has changed on the best practice there because uh, you still want your proxy to be monitored. Uh, something that has changed is that there's now a template uh, for the Zabbix server that will also monitor the proxy. So make sure that you actually upgrade the templates when you go from six to seven. Um, but on the actual proxy monitoring, the internal Zabbix monitoring there, nothing has changed. The proxy will monitor itself. Uh, that's still the best and the most straightforward way. If you don't want to do that, there is also the remote proxy monitoring template that you can utilize, but it isn't necessarily necessary. Are Zabbix proxies in a group using independent databases? Yeah, they each have their own database. Yeah. Or or you can now use the uh, hybrid functionality or the in-memory, so you might not need a database at all anymore. You still need it for configuration, even, uh, even um, in hybrid mode. Really? I just gave the yep. upgrade training and it said we don't need it anymore, but... As far as I know, we uh, we still need the database because configuration has to be stored somewhere. Metrics, sure, yeah. Uh, For the proxy? Stored in buffer, yeah. Needs to know what to monitor, when to monitor it, update intervals, things like that. Hmm. Maybe that has been changed in one of the minor releases lately, but as far as I know, no, database is still, still a requirement. I'm going to test that one because yeah. I'm not sure as well. But I read something like that in the training, so I'll I'll make sure to check the slides again. What if uh, Zabbix proxy has multiple IP addresses? Does the agent redirect still work in those cases? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? What if the Zabbix proxy has multiple IP addresses? Does the agent redirect still work in such a scenario? Hmm. Something I would also have to test because I think your proxy is listening on a single IP on yeah. your... A server, so, uh, so it would just listen on that single IP and not on another IP. Yeah, and you also, when you input the, the IP addresses and everything in the front-end configuration, it's just a single address, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think uh, it's just a single address, not multiple. Uh, do we need proxies to do H? Uh, we don't need proxies to do HA, right? The update just includes proxy HA. Yeah, you can still do server HA just by deploying your Zabbix server nodes. Proxy HA is just that for proxies for load balancing and also HA. Yeah. Can you use a subnet for server active? If so, how does that work with the router's gateway IP? Uh, yeah, you can use a subnet for server active. Uh, uh, no, 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 you cannot use a for subnet. server active. Right. Yeah, no. For active, no. It's it's single addresses or DNS. Yes. So uh, that's just for server for the passive agent. Yep. 
How does the active passive proxy setup impact data collection latency in Zabbix 7.0? Um, so the, what we discussed here, proxy groups don't necessarily impact data collection latency as far as I've seen it. Um, I mean, depends maybe if, if your host get assigned to a proxy that's in a different data center and then there's that impact. But other than that, performance wise, um, no noticeable impact whatsoever. No, no, I tend to agree. Uh, there's, there's of course, like considerations between active and passive, but nothing like on the latency side of things. I think. Yeah. Thank you. That was that was a lot. Uh, people are clearly interested in Zabbix uh, proxy load balancing and high availability, judging by the amount of questions I answered during your speech and right now after it. Um, so thank you for talking about it, presenting it, and. Uh, fully available to everyone uh, with probably more blog articles and speeches to come and use cases and case studies. Zabbix 7.0 is still relatively fresh. People are still waiting for a bunch of minor releases as they usually do for, for the version to stabilize, even though it's quite stable at this point. It's of course understandable that people wait for a while, usually half a year or so before they migrate to 7.0, so more to come.